You're watching VoiceOver, How Did You Do It? at voiceoverpodcast.com, where we talk to seasoned, successful voice actors to find out how they did it. I'm your host, Ian Kleinfeld, and you can find me at voicebyian.com. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Voice by Ian. Hello, Steve. Good evening. Hi, Ian. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for uh, thank you for asking me to be on here. I thank hope you you're, for uh, coming on. Hey, well, anytime. I I had nowhere else to be. So, uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know the feeling. Cheers. Yes. Here. Yes. Exactly. I know. I've got my seasonal mug here. Oh. No, it's seriously. Just... Thank you for uh, thank you for inviting me on. This is a very cool project you're doing. I think it's oh, thank uh, you. a great great outlet, and you know, I think it's um, I don't know, a really cool thing to just you know find out how other people did stuff. Right. It's what it's all about. Well, you know, I'm starting. So part of this is for me selfishly, in addition to being, you know, for other people in my situation, but it's, I, it's sort of like, how the hell did you do it? You know? <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I really want to know. So I figured I'd just ask people. So I think that's great. I think it's great. Yeah. Everybody, like everybody, how, how the hell did you do it? <laughs> right, right, right. Sure. Why not? How the beep did you do it? <laughs> right, right. We'll get that. We'll get that uh, royalty-free sensor beep into your uh, your show tag there. <laughs> Sounds good. So you're up in New York. I am. Yeah. Um, um, been here for a long time now. I moved to New York City in 2003. Uh huh. Um, got my first voiceover agent in 2004. Didn't uh -huh. did didn't do much with that agent for a few years, and then um. um but I've been, yeah, I've been in New York since 2004 and moved around to various parts of New York. And uh, now we're a little north of the city. And um, yes, yeah, so we've been here a long time. And you're down in uh, North I'm Carolina? North Carolina. I'm originally from New York, actually. I was born there. I uh, nice. lived there till I was about nine or 10. I moved to Hawaii with my mom um, for a couple of years. And then we moved to Northern California. And then I moved here in 2003. So Sweet. My dad, my dad was out here and... Uh, I came out here for family reasons and just decided to stay, finished up school, met my wife, bought a house. It's uh, it's great. So that's great. You know, that's I miss fantastic. having a big city nearby, but I also don't miss being in a big city. Right. I mean, right. Raleigh is cute, but it's cute that it thinks it's a big city. Uh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's sort yeah. of it's sort of what we like about where we are. We can commute into the city when we need it, and certainly before pandemic when we were going in much more often. But uh, get out of the city and get some fresh air, and um, yeah, nice. Get the best of both worlds. So. What town did you say we were in? Uh, we're we're in Westchester County. Oh, Westchester, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's really nice, Hudson River Valley, and yeah. lots of lots of nature, and you know, great great small towns. And oh yeah. That, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I haven't yeah. been there since I was a kid, probably. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where in New York did you grow up? Manhattan, small oh, yeah. oh, town. Oh, so right in right in New York. Yeah, yeah, a little town. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I grew up right near Gramercy Park, actually. Beautiful. Yeah, we didn't Beautiful. have. Uh, apparently, if if you stood on the back of the toilet. And you looked out the little window, you could see a corner of the park. There you so go. Technically, we could have had a key, but I don't think we had a key. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I went I, to lunch a few times at the Players Club in my acting days, so that was uh, as close as, as close as I uh, yeah. as close as I got to uh, getting into Gramercy Park. Uh, well, that's okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, I was, you know, I was a very, very sophisticated child. <laughs> 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 anyway, so um, let me ask you, what's your business name, if you have one, website, uh, et cetera, et cetera? Sure. Yeah, Steve French. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, my website is stevefrenchvo.com. And anyone um, listening to this should check it out because it is an awesome site. Oh, thank you. It just just uh, underwent a, a whole redesign by my good friend, Robbie Pandy. Um uh, P A N D E you should look him up and work with him. He's fantastic. Thank you for saying that, Ian. That's um, yeah, it's yeah. So really, it's, really sort nice of a labor of love, you know. It's it was something I, I wanted to to put some effort into, and you know, I'm not. I, I I'll be the first to admit I'm not a big like marketer brander. I've never sort of been interested in like branding myself in some way. So so my goal and the challenge for Robbie was, we need to come up with some sort of brand for me that is not a brand and that that does not sort of pigeonhole me into one little thing 
A um, brandless brand. A brandless brand. The brand without a brand. So we, I, I think he did. There's a nice your brand. Job. I think we found it. Yes, we got it. We got it. Um, I'm going to trademark that real quick. Um, but yeah, so it, so I, I, I'm very very pleased with the way it came out, and you know it's a work in progress, but I, I, I think it's uh, it's a a good a great place to start, and I'm just amazed at what he accomplished with the working with a guy who really like had no idea, you know, doesn't want to yeah. like put any unnecessary focus on himself, and yeah, you know, I don't I don't know what can you, and, and he came up with some great stuff, so. It really um, is. It's like a it's like a big marquee, you know, and neon. And it's any of you listening, definitely check it out. I'm a, I'm actually a web designer and web developer. Nice. It's like, damn, I wish I could do something that looked like that. <laughs> you, you tell your friend that it, he did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, he uh, I, all the all the all the praise goes to him. He did a fantastic job. Nice, nice. So, um, let me ask, what sort of VO are you doing these days, generally speaking? Well, most of the stuff, I mean, it's, I'm very, very fortunate to be busy with a kind of a couple different things. Um, the season just ended, but uh, for the last two seasons, I've been the promo voice for The Mandalorian on Disney Plus. Oh, that's um, right. I remember reading that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been an, you know, an amazing thing to be this, you know, infinitesimal microscopic part of. Um, Do you want to so repeat that, just, that again? Because it's so badass. Yeah. <laughs> Steve French is the promo VO for The Mandalorian. That's amazing. It, you know, it's 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 funny. Like all of us voice actors, I think we, we you know you always want like uh, you always want as many gigs as you can get. You always want to be working. You want to, and I, I in the middle of the season while The Mandalorian stuff was was running, um, my wife and I were watching some like deep distant cable channel, some cheesy holiday movie on a you know <laughs> deep distant cable channel. Yeah, and some kind of some little commercial came up for something you know some random thing and i said wait a minute i auditioned for that oh damn it i auditioned for that one she goes honey you're doing the mandalorian can you please like be satisfied with something <laughs> you know um so no it really is like you know the 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 gig of a lifetime just just to be in any small way associated with that absolutely um, yeah th that show is remarkable and um so it's been very cool you know just to have that as something you know be scrolling through twitter and you know i'm retargeted for a mandalorian commercial and there's my voice it's really weird it's very surreal that is um, really really awesome that must yeah be funny. yeah it's cool yeah it's just one of those things you know i mean for anybody listening i'll tell you a quick story about that gig i, I have a friend that works at disney who's in charge of uh, of a lot of the the campaigns for the new Disney Plus stuff. And for years, he'd been very kind in getting me some auditions here and there, and I, nothing had ever clicked, but, you know, he, he had me in, in the door. Um, and I just, last September, I just lost out. It was down to me and one, one other guy on a big national commercial campaign. Uh -huh. And I was feeling, I remember the day, September 6th, Monday, September 6th, I'd, you know, gotten the news that I, that I didn't get the job. And really needed some money and I was feeling really bummed out. And, and so I, in the afternoon, when my son got home from, from school, I took him to the, to the playground and I was kind of feeling a little sorry, having a moment, feeling a little sorry for myself, you know, and then my, my phone dinged and I had an email from my agent and he said, Hey, um, Disney has asked for you to, to audition for this Mandalorian show. And of course I'd heard about it. And honestly, in my first, my first impulse, my first reaction was, oh, God, here we go again. Uh -huh. just, you know, like, some amazing project that I'm not going to get. And I'm going to, I'm going to have to, you know, and because everything in this business is last minute, I had to like, you know, get my son off the playground, get him in the car, get, let's go back home, you know, get him in front of the iPad, run upstairs, get my booth going. And so I was a little like, you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't angry about it, but it was a little like, uh, here we go. You know, it's one of those days. It was kind of right. And then maybe a day or two later, you probably brought that energy into the audition and that's probably what did it. <laughs> well, probably, you know, oftentimes it's sort of like if you maybe, if you, if you're maybe aren't so desperate for it, if you're just saying, ah, whatever, let me see what this is. <laughs> um, Disney Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Like I'm ever going to get this thing. Yeah. Um, and my agent gave me a great, you know, he listened back. He gave me a great note on it, made an adjustment. And, um, and after a couple of days, I, you know, they kept asking for some different picks up pickups and, I said, something seems a little different about this. This might be happening. And then a couple of weeks later, I saw online, I saw a video, you know, a, 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 like a YouTube clip, a special clip for The Mandalorian. And I turned it on and by gum, there was my voice at the beginning of this thing. And I just, 
I, I cried. I just, I actually I'm cried. Like, God, nice of them to tell you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. No, that's a so kind that's, of an awesome way to find out though at the same time, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I sort of, it was like leaning that way. So you sort of knew, but but that's something else for people that, that are kind of new to this business. That can happen sometimes. Like I've had things where my voice has been out there on a campaign before I knew I had officially booked a campaign. That's how fast some of this stuff moves, so. so give um, us Give us the Mandalorian voice for a second. Do a little... <laughs> mini spot for a second what would the you know you know it's funny my sister uh knitted knitted a little baby yoda for me oh nice. so he, he he stays in my booth right here <laughs> uh-huh um you know there's there are a couple different mandalorian voices if i have time it goes a little bit slower the mandalorian all episodes now streaming um but sometimes they have really fast really fast ones and that that his pitch goes up a little bit so, and depending on what kind of spot, so I give them some options that they can use. So sometimes you might hear the Mandalorian, all episodes now streaming, uh, just depending on what they need for, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I always try whenever I send, send them the stuff, give them a few different options of things, speeds and tones so they can pick yeah. and choose. So. You know, I, I did a Bill Nye impression for one of my gigs. It was mm -hmm. for, for a, an ad agency that was working with a larger company that I can't mention probably. Uh -huh. um, but they, they're going to hire Bill Nye for their um, ad campaign, but of course they don't want him. They don't want to pay him a thousand bucks an hour to, you know, record for their in-house testing of the copy and stuff like that. Sure, sure. So they yep. were looking for somebody on one of the pay-to-plays to do a Bill Nye impersonation, and um, so the funny part of this story is that you know, when they rewrote the script and had me do it again, they wanted it as a fifteen-second spot, and it was a twenty-two-second script. So right. you know, and in that's a big difference. That's, you know, 150%. Right. I did it at 22, 23 seconds. I did it at 20 seconds. And then I gave them one at 15 just for giggles so that they could say like, no, this is not a 50. And it just right. felt like, you know, Bill Nye cooking up meth in his, one of his experiments, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the challenge. Sometimes you get those spots oh that God. are just, there's, <laughs> you just feel like there's no way. Um, I did a series of Toyota spots this summer. I had a really fun time working on uh, like a summer sales event for a regional Toyota. Yeah. Um, and all the spots were like that. And, you know, the, the, the creatives were great. And every, every session was about like, can we lose this word? Can we, will legal be okay if we get rid of this so we can have a breath so we can get all these things in there. And that's just a skill you have to develop, right. Is, is, yeah. you know, it making sense of that copy that just doesn't belong in there, but somehow you got to make it fit. And, and make uh, it conversational, even though it's nothing anyone would ever say to any other person he, living he, or dead. Yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. So, so, yeah. what, so what, you're doing Toyota commercials, you're doing The Mandalorian? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then a couple other things I, I guess I can't really talk about, but I, I had, um, I've got some ongoing work with uh, National Geographic Channel. I do some narrations for them, um, nice. which is always very exciting. And um yeah, a couple of things that are in the works, which is it's very nice. And I feel very blessed that I've got, you know, going into the new year, I've already got some work lined up, which is really nice. cool. Um, You'll have so, to yeah, and, which shows on National Geographic so I can watch them. Right, right. I did a, I did a, 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 a series this uh, spring and summer called Border Force USA about the border, border patrol uh, customs and, and border protection down in um, uh, between Mexico and Texas. Uh -huh. um, and then I did uh, added an American narrator to this really fun British series called Car SOS. Uh -huh. um, and so for the American audiences, they retitled it Auto Masters. And we had a whole day on, on Nat Geo where it was 10 episodes of uh, this really fantastic oh, nice. um, and a very heartfelt show where they, they fix up cars for, you know, people who are, you know, usually car nuts, but have had some sort of tragedy in their life or are facing health issues and they can no longer fix up their cars. So they take these, you know, beat up old cars and fix them up. Um, but I really fell in love with that show doing it. And uh, the original episodes are on Disney plus um, not with my narration, but the original uh, narrators. So if you have that service and you want to check it out, car SOS is just great. It'll, it'll cure what ails you for sure. Is it called car SOS, car SOS on Disney plus? Yes. Car SOS is the uh, original name of it. And um Auto yeah, masters. so it, yes, automatic, but it very, very lighthearted. And so that what's nice is some of the stuff I do for Nat Geo is I've done some of their hostile planet compilations. There was, it was yeah. a series of Bear Grylls, and then that's very serious and dramatic stuff. And then Automasters is just really goofy, light. We were improvising, and 
I love nice. my team at Nat Geo. I've really found a, a nice family there. Um, nice. And did you ever with. think you'd be doing that? That's pretty awesome. You know, it, that was definitely a dream. And it was something that I had always hoped that I could get into. But I never, that was a door for a long time that, that never opened up for me. Um, until I started working with my amazing reps at SBV in LA. Um, and they had these great uh, narration connections and Nat Geo connections. And I just happened to book one of the things I auditioned for and started working with these producers. And um, uh, they eventually started calling me back for different things. And, and it's really uh, John and Darcy at Nat Geo have just been amazing. So that was, and it's interesting that you asked that because I think our VO careers are, are sort of filled with stuff like that. Like no matter how many things you're doing, there's probably always one more thing that you would like to do that you'd like yeah. to get into. So no matter how many spots of the Mandalorian I do, um, there's always going to be something that I would I, I haven't done yet that I would right. I would for, like to do. For Karin Gilfrey, it's being a Disney princess. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's what she said. So I was like, oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, um, so I you called know, up I, Disney and I was like, hey guys, Karin really wants to be a Disney princess. What can you do? And right. Next thing you know, boom. Next thing you know, listen, you're, th this is what you do for people. That you is what I do. Things happen. You, you know who I am. The connections. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Nice. Very cool. So what, what were you doing before VO? Well, so before a lot of different things, I, I trained as an actor. I went to school at a place called the Hart School in West Hartford, mm -hmm. Connecticut, uh, okay. part of the University of Hartford. Um, and so I was a stage actor and a singer for many years. Um, and you know, it's funny because VO was always something that I, I only knew one guy in my life that was a voiceover guy. He had been an actor and then he, he was this amazing promo voiceover guy. He had a home studio long before that was ever really a thing you know, with an old ISDN codec box yeah. on the line in the house and all that stuff. Um, but to me, I had always heard, oh, you could probably you have an interesting voice. You could probably make some money while you're doing your acting gigs, you know, like uh -huh. you go record, record a commercial in the afternoon and be in a play at night. Um, and so it wasn't until, so I was doing regional theater, did some off-Broadway stuff. I was doing some more singing. Uh, I was in musicals in, in 2010, I guess. I was in two acapella musicals in the same year, which is really funny, you know. Um, so I was doing that. And then, of course, in, in between the many fallow times when I wasn't, it wasn't able to, to get on stage in a show. I was, you know, temping, doing office jobs and, yeah. uh, all, you know, I got a, a laundry list a mile long. I worked in a hotel with a bunch of buddies of mine as a doorman and a bellman. Um, and so then it wasn't until um, I was starting to get a little tired of, you know, the life on the road and going yeah. from city to city. And, um, you know, you go in, in a regional theater, you're going to a city for two, three months at a time. If you're on right. a tour, I, I never had to, I never did a tour, but, you know, that can be for a year or even more. Thespian. Yes, exactly. Um, I loved my time doing that. I love my, my lifelong friends from doing it. Um, and God, do I have respect for the, for the actors that um, have the time and the strength to do that because it's, it's an extraordinary lifestyle. Um, and I, I personally had started to, to get a little weary of it. I wanted to spend a little more time with my wife. Um, and once we decided to have a family, um, and have a baby, uh, we said, well, since I'm starting to do a lot of this voiceover stuff from home, I, I, in 2011, I got with my present representatives and started, I, you know, I wasn't full time by any means, but I was busier with auditions and sort of making a go of it. Um, so we said, all right, why don't you, I'll stay home and I can watch our son and I can also pop into the booth and record some stuff every once in a while. And um, so that's, you know, that's where that, that is right now. We had our son in 2015. So I've been sort of at home doing this as my job for about five years now. Nice, nice. Yeah. And how did you get started doing VO? So you, you mentioned that people were saying, oh yeah, you could probably make some money doing VO on the side. <laughs> right, how did right. you actually get started doing that? Well, so it's a funny story. I was, uh, I'll try to tell it very quickly. In 2004, I was yeah, doing Harry. a play at, at Hartford Stage Company. And I was un doing this play called The Mystery of Irma Vep. For anybody who doesn't know it, it's a quick change act for two actors. Okay. And I was very, I had just graduated from college and Michael Wilson, who was running the theater at the time and directing the show, gave me this great opportunity to understudy those two guys. So I wasn't in the play, but I was understudying them in case any one of them ever got sick. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I knew the play backwards and forwards. And I would actually, we do understudy rehearsals where I would just do the play straight through. I do all the characters. <laughs> oh my you know, God, right, that sounds right like 
it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, so one day while doing that, I was getting a ride back to New York with one of the actors in the show and he had the keys for the rental car that they shared. And the other actor was in a restaurant eating with some friends after a, a matinee that had come to see the show. He said, Oh, Steve, would you mind running these keys into Jeff and do you drop these off for him? So I ran in and I found him at his table. And I said, Hey Jeff, sorry to interrupt, but here are the keys from James. Um, see you later. Have a good weekend. And about an hour later, I got a call from him in, in the car and he said, so you're not going to believe this, but one of the people sitting at the table is one of the biggest commercial agents in New York city. And he wants you to give him a call. Holy crap. Um, you were actually discovered. Oh, well, yeah, I was sort of discovered, I guess. Um, and so he wasn't a voiceover guy, but I eventually went in to meet him. I had this sort of rough demo that I'd made up, you know, in, in after school. And um, I got to meet the voiceover agents at this very, one of, one of New York's biggest agencies. And I had this very sort of, I, did, I didn't have any clue what I was doing in voiceover. I booked, I think, I think I was with them for maybe three years or four years or something. And I think I booked like, two things two like one-off radio spots you know uh-huh. like nothing nothing major um i get auditions from them every once in a while and i knew that things were kind of coming to an end when um they they kind of randomly called me in for an audition after a long time and i went to their office and the company had moved to a different building and i had no idea that they'd moved so i at that <laughs> point i called them up and i said maybe we're not working so closely together uh-huh. um so, so then a few years went by and um um and you weren't I doing was, voiceover in there no, I, in that interim, I wasn't doing any voiceover, um, just stage acting and, and temp jobs and that sort of thing. And then um, in 2010, I was back up at Harvard Stage and the amazing Bill Raymond, who's a sort of legendary New York actor um, and been in lots of movies and TV shows. And, um, he um, was playing Scrooge at, in Christmas Carol at Harvard Stage Company. I was back up there and he very kindly said, hey, give me your demo. I'll, I'll take it into my, my voiceover agents. And I had I'd gotten a new demo done by that point. Um, and so he took it in. I met with them at Access Talent, Linda Weaver and Chaz and Melissa McGee at Access Talent. And um, they said, all right, well, we'll, we'll start thinking about this. We're not sure if we're going to start working with you. But um, uh, I guess the day after I met with them, they, they called me and they said, hey, this this audition just came across our desk. Why don't you uh, take a look at it and, and uh, go, go in for it tomorrow and just, you know, see what happens. Um, and it it was an audition for NASCAR promos for NASCAR uh, on ESPN. And just by a fluke of beginner's luck, I booked the damn thing. Oh, wow. And um, it turned out to be this like two year promo campaign for the NASCAR nationwide series on ESPN nice. um, in the winter of 2011. So this is uh, just about, we're coming up on 10 years um, that I started working with them. And so I was just learning on the job. I mean, you know, I went into that first session um, with like, seven producers from espn it was the first you know first day of this big campaign all these Mm -hmm. creatives and all these people and Mm -hmm. i'm behind the glass in this big fancy studio that i'd never been in before and Uh making it up you know and just sort of because that was the thing that i didn't do which i don't recommend anybody listening that's starting out take classes get coaching there's it's so easy to find that stuff these days great coaches and to do it over zoom or skype or whatever and i i didn't do that and i i'm sure i would have um You know, I'm sort of at 10 years now and feeling like I'm sort of in a groove, maybe, maybe, maybe career wise. Um, And maybe I could have expedited that if I, you know, maybe just taken some voiceover classes or gotten some coaching early on. You know, in recent years, I've definitely done a lot more coaching. But uh, but back then, I I went to this voiceover school of hard knocks. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So so that's that's sort of it. You know, it's sort of like my my little VO journey to where we are now. Nice. Very good. That's a great story. <laughs> oh, nice. And so, um, so what do you feel like you owe your current success in VO2? Again, it's, it's a shock to hear you say like you, you have current success because I still feel every day, I feel like I'm, I'm still that kid, you know, that like went into that ESPN booth with no idea what he was doing. You know, I yes. get, I get in front of this microphone and I'm like, well, okay, what's, what is this? How, how do I do this? Um, more than anything, Ian, it's people that have helped me along the way. You know, mm-hmm. I, I would be nothing, certainly without my friend Bill that walked in my demo, uh-huh. um, access talent for taking a chance on me. Um, but really, I think my my reps have been amazing at being patient with me. Because like I said, back in the day, I wasn't taking classes, I wasn't training. And so I was giving them like a lot of bad auditions. Every once in a right. while, I'd book, I'd book some stuff. 
But in those early years, it was a lot of highs and lows. Um, and so I sort of, I felt like for a long time, I sort of would just book enough and sometimes some sort of some decent high profile things, just enough to say like, okay, you probably know what you're doing here, but you're, you know, you don't have it every time you walk in the, walk in the booth. Right. Um, so honestly, for me personally, I think it's a lot of patience um, on the, on the part of people that, that have worked with me and a, a, a good eye to know and a good ear to say like, all right, here are the things that Steve is doing well. Um, let's push him in, let's push him in, in this area. Let's push him in this Avenue. Um, and I, you know, uh, something that, that my reps have always said, which, which I, I, I take to heart and I, I, I think is a very nice compliment. And I think it extends for my being an actor. They say, you know, part of your problem is one of your greatest strengths is that you've got a, a, a nice range of different things that you can do. And sometimes that can actually be hard for casting people to say like, oh, right, Steve's that guy. When I need this thing, I'll call up Steve. Right. Um, and I, I think I've always taken some pride in that because I don't want to just get pigeonholed into doing one thing because there are a, a bunch of different right. things that I can do. Um, and because of that, I've been very fortunate to work in like all these different uh, corners of the voiceover world, as I, as I like to say. Um, so I think it's just being open to trying new things and experimenting. Um, and learning. So, you know, if I had to say like, what's something that I owe my success to, again, it's so hard to even think of myself as a success because every day is sort of like, you know, starting from scratch, but. Um, yeah, but dude, you're on National Geographic. You're on the you're yeah. the voice for the Mandalorian. You right. you Toyota. So I hate to break it to you, but you're <laughs> successful at this. No, I mean, it's, you know, you're right. I mean, it, it is, there are things I've, I've, I, you, you reach, you know, you feel like you reach these different levels yeah. right and so yeah. things where you get to um so i think it's just you know not not getting too hard on yourself and finding a way to persevere it might be kind of a, a cliche it might be sort of overused but it really is about learning from your mistakes and being open to like listening back to those auditions for things that you didn't book and and like you know what i often will do is if i hear somebody on tv in a spot that that i didn't book uh -huh. or a promo campaign or something I'll, I'll listen, I'll take note, maybe I'll look it up on iSpot and then I'll go back to my audition for it. And I'll say, yeah, that's why they took, that's why they took that guy. Uh -huh. uh, that's, and that's why what I gave them didn't quite work. And I think, you know, what I, what I see a lot in young voice actors is maybe, and I think just as people, we sort of get this way. There's a bit of a, a reticence to accept, um, accept, you know, criticism, you know, constructive criticism or yeah. notes or to even admit that maybe you're not amazing at this quite yet. And that's uh, okay. Yeah. Like, it's totally okay to be that way, right? You, you have to learn. And the only way you get better is by failing. I mean, you know, you, you listed off these awesome things I've been a part of. You, what we haven't listed off are the literally thousands of times right. that I have not booked a job. I mean, I've been I was going to mention that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew you were just waiting to rub my face you, in You it. didn't book the... <laughs> oh, my, my leave meeting. Um, yeah, I mean, but it's, but it's true, right? I mean, I've been fortunate. The goofy thing is I've been fortunate to yeah. have not booked thousands of auditions that i've done you know sure. and that's that's the way you learn so you just all you need is just that opportunity to to get your voice out there and and learn from it yeah and i'll i'll quote yoda and I, I i quoted this the other day actually in an interview but um if you want to know the difference between a, a beginner and a master the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried absolutely yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the, you know, master like has I said, more times than beginner has even tried, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's only like, again, and a perfect example of that is that when I booked that NASCAR thing, it was like beginner's luck, you know, I mean, right. I, I'd had that agency beforehand, but I walked in and I booked this thing and then didn't really book a whole lot after that because I still didn't really know what I was doing. And I was learning right. that specific thing on the job. So that was that was a good lesson for me, you know, like, yeah. Steve, you got a long way to go here, dude, before you're, you know, and it's comfy amazing. With and that probably never ends that you feel like you have so much to learn. Always. I mean, you know, it's every I can't tell you how many times we're, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic right now. I'm with my son, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, so my my individual schedule for me is often a little hectic because we're dealing with like virtual schooling during the right. days. Yeah. And then any time my wife is still working, you know, uh, blessedly. Um, 
So anytime like during the day that I have an audition and again, all this stuff is really last minute. I've got to, you know, get him situated so I can run up and do it. So a lot of times I'm sort of like running into the booth to do something. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times that's obviously worked against me because I don't, you know, I'm like running at a thousand miles an hour and maybe a bunch of little things that I forget to do, you know, little checklists for each audition yeah. that I forget to do and I'll blow something just because I was just moving a little too fast, you mm -hmm. know? Um, every once in a while that sort of works in your favor, you know, you can have a, you can have a read that just, there's something about that sort of frenetic pace that you've been keeping up throughout the day that sort of works for the thing and you don't put too much thought into it. Um, but you know, you always need a little bit of a, a system when you get in the booth. Here's, here's what I do. Here's how I put these, these ducks in a row so I can, you know, give out a good read. Yeah. Oh, nice. Any advice for new BAs? Wow. I mean, there's, <sighs> how much time do we have? I, I mean, it, it really is. I think it's, it, it really is about um, letting, letting the journey happen to you. Right. I mean, I think we, you should all have, everybody should have a goal. Everybody should have dreams, voice over dreams that they're pursuing, but I've, I've gotten to do so many things that I never even really even knew were a part of the voiceover world. Um, and I think if you can be open to opportunities that come along be open to exploring coaching and most importantly don't feel like you have it figured out and know that it's okay to not have it figured out it's okay to go to go get coaching to say i don't know how to do that thing that thing that somebody does i don't know how to do that i mean i can't tell you mm -hmm. how many voice actors i listen to either in movies or or cartoons you know animation actors where I would love to think of myself as this like accomplished voice actor that can do anything. And I'll, I'll listen to, I'll listen to something that, you know, Steve Bloom or, or uh, Roger Craig Smith or D Bradley Baker does. And I say, I have no idea how to do that. I could never do what those guys are doing. I, I don't know how they've gotten there. And it's only through, you know, thousands of hours and decades of work and training and experimenting and throwing something against the wall and failing. Um, so, you know, it's really this career is about perseverance and it's yeah. about you're, you're going to get rejected all the time. You're, you're going to want those jobs so bad and they're going to pass you by. Yeah. Um, but I, I used to sing with this amazing choir uh, in New York called Broadway inspirational voices. And one of the things we'd always say um, is what's for you won't go by you. Um, nice. And I think, I think it's important to remember that, that when the time is right, when you are sort of, when 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 those midichlorians are uh, are all <laughs> used in the right way, um, mm. when when you are ready for that opportunity um, in your training and in your temperament, um, and you're ready to sort of receive the things that come with it, and you're ready to give out the proper attitude um, and give a producer or an agent or a client um, what they need from uh, from their VO, then it'll happen for you. Nice, nice, very nice. Um, you mentioned things that you never thought of as part of the voiceover world. Can you name a few? Sure. Um, one of the things that I haven't done a lot of it since we've been As home, long as they're not too embarrassing. <laughs> I'll tell you an embarrassing one in a minute. <laughs> okay. The, but the, the first thing is I, I ended up getting a lot of work with this incredible group, um, uh, the, the Dan and Bruce company. Um, who do ADR looping for movies and TV shows. Uh -huh. And that was never something that I even knew existed. And so if anybody doesn't know what that is, ADR stands for automated dialogue replacement. Um, the old term was looping, where in post-production, they will re-record bits of, of a movie, a dialogue that, that got messed up in production. Um, or you're doing things like newscasters background voices so you'll literally sometimes they call it wallow where you'll get in a, a room with a group of actors and you will improvise background dialogue for whatever scene is going on um and so those guys will send out you know beforehand you get lots of information on the project that you're doing the the uh you know settings the time periods different things that you should be researching so that you can have a believable coherent background conversation mm -hmm. um but if anybody is bored enough to go look at my IMDb, you'll see these various TV shows and movies that I got by working with those amazing guys. Um, and I learned so much about, you know, how to be an improviser, the things that you should keep in mind, the ways that you're using your voice uh, to play different characters within a scene, how to blend into something, how to pop out. Um, so that was one of the biggest ones for me. But I also, I, I sort of never even really considered like, 
you know, industrial videos, e-learning. I barely even knew what a promo was before I booked it, you know, the uh-huh. first time around. So, um, you know, knowing the differences between commercials and promos and trailers and, um, I, you know, I've done a, a small handful of interactive sessions and I think the, the actors that can do video games over and over again, day after day, week after week are geniuses and warriors. I don't know how they do it. Uh, I always sort of seem to shred myself up when I do them, but uh, um, just lots of these different little corners of the voiceover world that exist. And you might find that you have a, a dexterity for something that you didn't, didn't even think about before. You know, it's not just... It's not just cartoons and it's not just in a world. It's all of this stuff in between, you know? Nice. Nice way to put it too. (laughs) Nice. Very cool. So what's the embarrassing story? Oh, well, and it's actually sort of an amazing story. Um, Okay. What's the amazing embarrassing story? (laughs) (laughs) Let's just say I worked, I worked on a, 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 I, I worked on a movie where we were playing, uh, uh, tortured prisoners and uh, who were being hung upside down um, uh, for, for hours on end and had to make like these disgusting gurgling sounds. There were trays put underneath us to catch our saliva when oh we were God. coughing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty crazy. Um, wow. Yeah. So they actually hung you upside down for a significant amount of time you know it's funny there were like three actors it was a small session there were three of us and uh we sort of like held each other up it was very it was very strange it's really really out of the ordinary but but quite wonderful in the end so it was good wow it that's good. amazing it's funny my wife and i um always joke about like when we see i watch a lot of law and order um uh-huh. during the quarantine especially like i went through all of svu i wow. ran out of svu i bought all of the discs of the original Law and Order. I've been going through that. We always, wow. you know, have a joke about like, I don't know, whenever some someone is like just, I don't know, disgusting or completely unappealing or just like the worst person imaginable. We're like, you know, she'll be like, oh, I could see you playing that guy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm like, oh, could you see me play that guy? Or you know, sometimes Thanks, I'll be a honey. corpse Thank and I'll you. be like, oh, I could see you play that corpse, babe. You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. Let's like that. That's, nice. sort of, that's sort of like uh, when I was in high school. I had a my one of my best friends was a very tall, handsome guy, very very attractive guy, sickeningly you know gif- gifted in terms of looks. Yeah, wasn't very talented in any other ways, but uh, no. Um, but I remember uh, a woman in town said, um, "Oh, I, I want to make an announcement at the school. I have a great idea, Steve. You could do the announcement with your with your announcer voice." And you could stand behind Andrew, and Andrew could stand there and pretend like he's the one delivering the message. <laughs> I probably should have known at that point that on-camera work was not going to be my strong suit. But, uh, so I know, I know your pain. I know your pain. That's hilarious. Well, she's a stand-up comedian, so we get pretty brutal around the house here. So there you go. That's good. That's good. Loving, you got to have a good sense of humor brutal, as we call it. Yeah, that's good. I love it. Very cool. So you ready to do some uh, cold reads? I'll, I'll let me get my script up here in front of me that I have not been allowed to look at. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so hey, hey. while Steve, while Steve is getting his script, I'll just remind you that you're listening to voiceover. How did you do it uh, on voiceoverpodcast.com or whatever you're listening to? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, if you're watching it on YouTube, definitely like, and subscribe. If you're listening on Apple tunes or anything, give us a review and uh, like, and subscribe. And did I mention liking and subscribing? Do that. <laughs> click that button click, click that, that button. button exactly ding 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 all right so thank you you uh you ready steve all right i'll give it a shot here all right you just want you want me to go right into it huh sure i mean you can you can practice if you want to i mean there's no real rules about it it's just i want <clears throat> the reason i do this is i want people to be able to see how varying experienced voice actors read a piece of cold copy and sure. if, if that means you want to like talk through it once and then you know do it or if you absolutely no i mean and that's a good thing to know i mean i would never audition something without having read it first right yeah. i mean you just you wouldn't do that so typically what i do is i just sort of try to read through it somewhat emotionless just to literally get the words across your tongue so the first thing i do is i'd say lift is a lot more than just a car ride yeah you heard me right shared rides bikes scooters fancy cars public transit more they're all available with your lift app we're always happy to pick you up but we can help 
you get there more ways than you thought. Download the Lyft app today and get going. So you can already see I've like tripped over a couple things. So I would go back and check those and they're all available with your Lyft app. We're always happy to pick you up. But we can help you get there more ways than you thought. Download the Lyft app today and get going. Okay, so that's sort of like, you know, in, in a lot of days, things are really fast, right? So you do have to yeah. kind of, so, but that's sort of what I do. Typically, I just, just try to get it across your tongue as fast as, you know, yeah. not as fast as you can, but just get it out. See, see what those words are that you're going to say. And then by doing that, you get, you know, you get the impression what this thing is. So I'll give you two takes what I, what I typically do. Typically, I try to do something that, that I think is sort of the main direction, sort of like the, the middle of the road, like what this, what to me, this read is like. And then I try to give them something a little different. So we'll see, we'll see what that is. I, I won't Sounds premeditate good. that, but we'll try to see it. So here's sort of like what my first take on this would be. I would say, Steve French. Lyft is a lot more than just a car ride. Yeah, you heard me right. Shared rides, bikes, scooters, fancy cars, public transit, and more. And they're all available with your Lyft app. We're always happy to pick you up, but we can help you get there more ways than you thought. Download the Lyft app today and get going. So then here is take two. Did you know that Lyft is a lot more than just a car ride? Yeah, you heard me right. We got shared rides, bikes, scooters, fancy cars, public transit, and more. And they're all available with your Lyft app. Listen, we're always happy to pick you up, but we can help you get there more ways than you thought. So download the Lyft app today and get going. <laughs> I, I feel like you could be a guy in, in Law & Order, like unpacking a truck or something, you know? It's one of those characters with that, that voice. <laughs> right, right. Do you, you want know. to do it any other ways? You want to play around with it? You know, it's, it's, th this is an interesting script. I mean, obviously, so that second take probably doesn't work, right? Because it's right. sort of, he's a little aggressive. And yeah. I don't think we, you, you know, you don't want something. I always just try to show a little bit of range, right? I try to take right. it in a different get direction. Get the hell in the lift car right now. Just, Shut up. Just, get in the back and we're going to Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, we want people to actually use the product. So um, let's try this. Let's try a nicer way. <laughs> I went into a commercial audition like that one time where somebody had come out before me and clearly it was like off his rocker. And the, the <laughs> casting director was so shaken <laughs> that when the two of us got into the audition, it was an on-camera thing, the casting director actually did this. He went, <laughs> he goes, gentlemen, I would like to remind you that the goal of this is to want the audience to want this thing, not <laughs> hate your guts. <laughs> Okay. I, I would have loved to have seen whatever that guy did. Oh my God. I know. Got somewhere on a tape that thing is. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if anybody needs to listen to you know, me say that, but, but hopefully maybe they could hear sort of my intention with that. The first one is sort of, sort of bright and easy and simple. Com you keep it conversational and you try to try to break that up. You know I mean? Clearly something like this is, um, is actually a nice, uh, copy just as it's written. I, I obviously embellished and added a few things, which yeah. I think is okay to do sort of in a second take commercially. It's okay to add some stuff in there to make it make it more conversational, something that fits you right. Um, as long as you're not going crazy and changing the whole script, but just those little, you know, yeah. I mean, I've I've booked jobs where I've had I've had creatives say, yeah, that when when you like did that thing where you when you said, you know, that really stuck out to us. So, so you know, it just makes it more natural. It's, it's okay in an audition to do that. Nice. Um, commercially, promo, definitely not. But commercially, right. it's, you know, and especially with like radio commercials, it's, it's you, you'll, you'll often get asked to improvise in a session. So feel free, have fun with it, you know? Nice. Yeah. Did you want to hit another one? I, I, I mean, you know, I think we're okay. I mean, you know, I, 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 something like this, I, I always sort of recommend two takes, especially yeah. for something that's like a standard 30 second spot, unless you have something like really that, that jumps out of you that says like, I've got to do this guy for this voice. Oh, yeah. For this you know spot. You know what you're going to have to do right now. You're going to have to do it in the Mandalorian voice. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what it would be interesting is that you'll see that like a promo voice just doesn't work for this. No, right. Of and it's like, you know, and, and it's, and it's probably a good thing where if you just say, Lift is a lot more than just a car ride. It's like <laughs> we're totally changing whatever this thing is. That's you know? amazing. Keep going, man. 
Well, but so, so here's a, so we'll try something interesting just as a goof with this, okay. right? Yeah. So well, let's say, let's say we're going to take, for some reason, they want something like, you know, announcers and dramatic. Lyft is a lot more than just a car ride. Yeah, you heard me right. Shared rides, bikes, scooters, fancy cars, public transit, and more. And they're all available with your Lyft app. We're always happy to pick you up, but we can help you get there more ways than you thought. Download the Lyft app today and get going. So you could probably nice. like find <laughs> find something in there that takes him out of his, you know, that's a little yeah. tongue in cheek. That's a little, yeah. you know, he, he, you know, he, he knows he's being a little too serious about this thing that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and so I, I do that sometimes too, you know, you might, you just take it in like a completely different direction just to say, Hey, I've got this thing in my pocket if you're interested in it, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember a great actor, a Broadway actor told me, he said, you know, I had this one song in my rep book, you know, for anybody that d doesn't know how, you know, auditioning for the theater stuff works so for musicals, you have a rep book with all of your songs right. that, that, you know, and, um, you know, you, you have certain songs that show off things. He goes, you know, and I've got this one song that's got a, I throw a big high note at the end. And just so I can say, I've got that if you need it. You nice. know? And, and I think that's kind of what we're doing, uh, you know, as actors, you, you don't want to just, you don't want to just give them the words. You don't just want to say the words that are there. You want to bring yourself to, to it to say, we should hire that guy because he's going to bring this out of it. So nice. always, 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 you know, you want to, you want to read the script that they've given you and you want to get their point across, but you bring, you have to bring yourself to it. And, and there are, there's always more than one way to do that. Yeah. So. Very nice. Oh, that's, that's fun. Thanks for having me do that. It was great. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it is fun. We have some, some fun reads on it. So <laughs> as you can imagine, people are all over the place, both oh, sure. and people mess with it a lot. So it's, it's, it's actually, that's actually from my demo. Um, uh. it's, it's one that didn't get used. So, um, nice. Anna Gardino and I wrote that up and we, um, I think we used a little bit of a real lift commercial and then played it and moved it around and, you know, all sorts of different things. So anyway. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, um, any more audition suggestions for newbies? I mean, you've hit some, but you got anything else? I think, you know, take your time as much as you can. And I know that's a bit of a, you know, a, a, a double-edged sword sometimes because sometimes you just don't have time. I mean, you know, you get that email will come in same day, rush, audition, get it back as fast as you can. Just do this. When you get in that booth, just go. And then look at your copy. Um, just take a moment, take a breath and read everything that's on that page that gets sent to you. Um, I don't think I'm sort of breaking any news here by saying that, but it really is important to just take a minute, find out who are you talking to? You know, even if it's just for yourself, even if you have just have to make up who it is that you're talking to in this particular instance, who is yeah. the person talking? Who are you talking to? What is the what is the script asking you, uh, asking you to sell, asking you to tell? Um, and also make sure that you look into you think about where the turn in the script is. Almost every good script has a turn of some kind. Analyze, you know, in in acting class, we called it text analysis. Um, Find out what is that script saying and how is it saying it. Mm -hmm. um, every script is going to be different. Um, and especially these days that commercials are so, the buzzwords are so like conversational, right? right? Relatable, natural. Break that up. Don't look at these things like lines. Look at it like a conversation. It may be a one-sided conversation, but take the time. It's, the, it's, those, it's those, those breaks from the rhythm of the script. It's that something a little unexpected. Again, not like, crazy out of left field who is this person what's going on but just something that makes that makes their ears perk up and say that was interesting that yeah. that's that's i i hadn't heard this that way before yeah. and that's what they're looking for you know people want you to get these jobs they, they it's not a it's a competition because you're up against other people but there is no sort of i think a lot of times when you're when you're sort of struggling you have these feelings of like, uh, everybody's out to get me. It's not, it's not working. They, they don't want me to succeed. It's like, no, that couldn't be farther from the, two, the truth. People want you to, to help them complete this project. Yeah. When, something I heard in a, I don't know, one of the seminars I've attended recently was just, um, you know, they, they want yours to be the one. They want to be done with it. They yeah. want to be done with the audition process. 
Yeah. You give them that, that opportunity, you know? Yes. Yeah. You know? And I, I think just having fun, um, having fun will come through in the microphone. Yeah. Um, I forget what great actor it was on uh, VO Buzz Weekly, but so they can smell your desperation. Yeah. And it's so true. So don't go in, don't go into anything needing that job. Um, although of course we need the job and we want the job, but go and have fun, go yeah. and have fun. And just, that's what you're there to do. Read it. And, and if you book the thing, man, that's icing on the cake. Exactly. So, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Um, sit or stand. Uh, I'm sitting right now. I stand always, 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 always. Um, the only things that I sit for are when I have a very long narration session. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I don't even do that. I just did a, a, a big thing for Nat Geo. I think I was in the booth for two and a half hours uh, and I stood the whole time. It's, it's something about it. It grounds me a, a little bit better. Sure. Um, and I can well, have more it, breath, but... you know, for yep. sure. But yeah. Oh, it, it reminds me. I was I was going to tell you while you were talking about the the auditions and all this stuff. Is um, I got a rush audition for something a little while ago, and then it was like rush. We need it as soon as possible. Um, we're sending it out to all these people, and um, it's for the uh, the first take of this whole thing, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like read the whole and and please read all the copy. So I look at it. It's like it's four pages. Four right. complete, and I just like pass. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Four I mean, that, pages. That and that's the thing too. You're gonna find, and it might be sort of unfathomable to people starting out, but you have to stand up for yourself. Yeah. You know, at times you just have to say, a client that is going to send out a four-page script. Nobody needs to hear you audition four pages of copy. Yeah. Nobody needs that. Um, and if they're sending it out rush and last minute and not cognizant of, of what they really need, that's maybe not a client you want to work with anyway, because yeah. it might, it might not be a great session. Um, well, and it's like, so, you know, you know. I think the thing is they wanted it so that they could have the thing to show the client, the whole thing right. and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm like, you know, that's so disrespectful, you know, just to all the people you're sending it out, you want them to spend, I don't know, what is that? Like seven, eight, nine minutes of reading depending. Right. When, depending on what it is. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you're editing and going through all that, you know? And yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, the, 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 the great thing about voiceover is that it's really high tempo and high energy and there's all this stuff going on. And that's also the lousy part about right. voiceover because you want to be able to feel like you can walk away for a little bit. You don't right. want to feel like you have to drop everything that you're doing. And it's, it, it really is a catch 22. And I, I, my big hope and dream as the world is going through everything that it's going through right now is that at some point we will say, yes, we are blessed to be busy and working during this time, but we also need to respect our mental health, our physical yes. health and say, you'll get the best work when everybody respects everyone's process. Um, so nice. give it, the, give it, give it the time that it needs and hopefully we will get there at some point. Nice. 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 Um, got any self-promotion you want to do? Is there anything Jeez, not, you're working on? Is there anything you like? Do you do coaching? Do you have a book? Do you, uh, no, uh, I, do you sell cookies on the side? You know, I mean, no, but my wife is a great baker. I've been eating all the cookies. I, I you know, should really probably stop eating all the cookies. Um, <laughs> no, nothing, nothing more than just my website right now. And if anybody is interested in following my mundane postings on Instagram or Twitter, I'm at Steve French VO. Um, and like I said, I've got a couple of fun projects coming up, but I can't quite talk about them yet, but I will certainly be promoting them once they're, uh, once they're good to go. And um, so, yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's the kind of thing where I'm always happy to, you know, I'm, I'm not a coach. I don't do that, but I, I, throughout the pandemic, I've been having lots of conversations with people who say, Hey, I'm thinking about getting into voiceover. Can we chat for a little bit? And if I've got time, I'm always happy to lend an ear and just tell you the little bit that I know. I mean, I can't get anybody an agent but I can sort of give you the advice from what I know. And, um, you know, oh, I just, I can't get any. All right. Well, all right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> bleep. Um, but you know, it's, I, I, I sort of have this little list of, you know, links and things that I've put together for people. Cause, uh, you know, and I, the way I look at it is I've had a million people help me get where I am today. It's the yeah. least I can do is take a little time, talk to somebody. Um, it's certainly, you know, it's no harm for me if I've, if I've got the time and I can, I can do it. So, nice. um, yeah. So, and again, the website is uh, stevefrenchvo.com and you can, there's a little contact form on there. You can reach out to me there. And, um, 
So yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Any final words? I, I don't think so. Um, Mandalorian season two, all episodes now streaming. <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep that going and hopefully, hopefully on we'll Disney plus. Six. There you go. Disney <laughs> plus. I forgot. I forgot on Disney plus. Ah, you're going to take my job. Ah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So no, thanks for having me on. I mean, I, th I think this is a really cool project and, Thank and you. especially, you know, mm. like from when I started out, there was the internet wasn't what it is today. Social media wasn't even a thing. That's how old I am. Um, and so now it's great to be able to connect with people like yourself and, and, you know, reaching out for that little bit of advice is so easy. And I don't think, you know, there's, I think everyone is happy. Anybody who really is uh, respectful and knows that, that, you know, you can always pay it forward a little bit. It's always happy to just give a little piece of advice, answer a question here and there, you know, it's, uh, it's great that, that this all sort of exists. So I'm excited to see your whole project come together here, man. Thanks for making me a part of it. Bill, thank you so much for being on, Steve. It's been really nice talking to you. Of course. Yeah. You've been listening to VoiceOver. How did you do it? At www.voiceoverpodcast.com with me, Ian Kleinfeld. You can watch the video to all our podcasts at voiceoverpodcast.com slash YouTube. The background track is 1959 by my alter ego, Max Rocket. And you can find that and other songs at www.maxrocketmusic.com. Remember to like, subscribe, write a review, and all that good stuff on whatever podcast streaming service you're listening to. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.